we're now going to add some foam to our bag. Now I'm using, um, this is two millimeter headliner or scrim foam, which is quite sufficient for this because it's quite a thick faux leather. Um, I've done the blue and red one I did with um, Style Wheel, so I know a thicker foam will work. Um, I just think this will be enough for, for this. So I'm just, as you can see, I've cut my foam. Well, I haven't cut my foam really. I've kind of lopped a bit off of the side of my roll of foam and it's got bits hanging off and all sorts. It's bigger. Um, and actually, I prefer to do that simply because I find cutting a piece of foam and then fitting it to the back of the piece of faux leather or whatever it is I'm using um, that's exactly the same size. I can never cut two things exactly the same size and these things do tend to, tend to move, even using... Um, a rotary cutter and ruler so I'd much rather just cut it a little bit bigger and trim away the edges so I've set my stitch length at uh, my longest stitch length which is six for me and I'm going to stitch all the way around the outside about an eighth of an inch seam allowance so within the seam allowance um, for the bag to just join the foam to my exterior panels now, the one thing I will suggest, and I'm not doing it here, but one thing I will suggest is that you use a different coloured thread to do your basting stitches. You, you're going to be removing all of these stitches, and it's actually a lot easier to see if you use kind of brightly coloured thread. So use a, you know, really pink or bright yellow or something that, one of those threads that you've got that you've got in a set that you know you're never going to use. Yeah, we've all got those. I buy my threads in boxes, and I've often got got a whole load of really pale pinks and sort of pale apricots which I know I've got no use for. I don't throw them away but I often use them for basting. Make sure that your faux leather is nice and nice and sort of not pulled to the point where everything bends but kept nice and taut onto your foam um, otherwise you'll end up with a slightly bumpy look to your bag which you don't want no need to back stitch so I'm going to use my Better scissors. Once you've got, you can then trim off any excess foam. And I can hear people going, Oh, that's wasteful. Now, if it's a biggish bit, then I might keep it. But these are little tiny strips that are not going to be of any use to anybody. So, um, unless you chop them up and use them for packing or filling or what have you and I know plenty of people that make toys that literally top chop bits like that into small pieces and we'll use it for toy filler so you know it has got a use if you happen to want to use it um, I just don't and I just find this is a heck of a lot easier than trying to make my piece of foam fit my piece of um, faux leather um, I think it's what they call the path of least resistance. Why make more work for myself if I don't need to? So there we go. That's one. And you can see I've already done the top one on this. I've decided that I'm going to keep this one really simple. Um, And again, my faux leather piece is smaller than the piece of foam that I've um, found. Anybody using scrim foam or headliner, ideally you should lay your faux leather right side up onto the, um, the sort of felted side. Um, this is headliner and it's got my, my headliner has a, a sort of a nylon mesh on one side and a sort of a white felted side on the other side. I always lay my faux leather right side up onto the felted side and it sticks to, it, it tends to stick to it, which I think is useful. Um, a bit like fuzzy felt when we were children. I refer to that, I think, in every video I've ever made with foam. Um, 
and I asked him what questions we've got. I don't know what fuzzy felt is. Um, I think you have to be a certain age. front and the back with the foam um, so basted in place on both panels. 